Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at creating this infinite tunnel effect. So let's make a start. So here's the model we're going to be using in Blender and I'm going to provide you with the USDZ so you can import it directly into Motion. I won't go into the details of how I made this because you can see it's reasonably elaborate. Uh, it would take quite a while to explain. Okay, so let's come over to Motion. So first of all, let's check up on our project setup. I'm going with 1920 1080. I want a frame rate of 25 frames a second and I want a duration of just 16 frames. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import that asset. So we're going to click on import, we're going to come to the assets folder and select tunnel model, bring that in. So let's turn this group to 3D uh, and I want to change the environment lighting of this down to 50% just to bring the overall lighting down a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do with this model is to make a replicator out of it. So object to replicate and the type of replicator we want is a line and we want start and end X at zero. And then we want to open up the end point and we're going to set that Z value to negative 10,000. And for the number of points, we're going to have 25. And the other thing we need to do is come down here and set the scale to 120. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a camera. So object camera, open its position up and set that Y position to negative 75. And then the Z position I'm going to set to negative 2200. And you can see we've now got our uh, tunnel kind of nicely framed up. I'm going to turn off the 3D overlays so they don't get confusing. So in order to create our animation, we're going to add a ramp behavior to that Z value. So add parameter behavior ramp. And the end value we're going to go with is negative 400. And that's going to create a perfect loop. So negative 400 like that. And then if we press play, you'll see the loop is absolutely perfect. There's a little bit of jumping there in the background because obviously we're, we're jumping back to the first frame but that's the literally the only thing that you're going to be able to see and what we're going to do is stick a massive great lens flare over the top of that so nobody is ever going to be the wiser so the reason for that negative 400 is that if you remember we had a replicator uh, scale of 10,000 and we had 25 points and tw 10,000 divided by 25 gives you 400. And that 400 number obviously gives us a perfect loop because we're just traveling that distance, that known distance. Just want to come back to the camera and point out that you can actually change the angle of view here to get sort of much more dramatic effect. So if I went for 60, you can see that that's um, even wider lens and we could even go for maybe 90. And you'll see that as we increase the angle of view, we appear to be going much faster and the tunnel appears to be a lot longer. I think that's all a bit too much. So I'm going to stick with 45. So we've got a fairly nice, gentle drift. It's really up to you what you what you choose there because any value there will work. The only thing is that the lighting, when we put it in, will change depending on the angle of view you use. So some of those values you'll have to adjust. So. That's the next thing we're going to be doing is we are going to be adding a light. So add object light. So I'm going to set the intensity of this down to 10 and then I'm going to come to its position. I'm going to have a Y value of negative 40 and Z value of zero. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to link the Z value to the camera. So add parameter behavior link and add in the camera. So it's following its Z position like that. And then I just want to change this offset here. Uh, so I'm going to go for 1750. And now you'll see that light is now kind of tied to the camera in the foreground here. So then I'm going to duplicate that light, right click, duplicate, 
And for this second light, I'm going to have an intensity of 50 and a Y position of 200. So this is going to illuminate a little bit more of the roof. And I'm going to come over and I'm going to change that link offset to be 1250. And you can see now we're sort of lighting up these areas here. If I turn that on and off, we're going to kind of getting a different lighting effect. So already our scene is starting to be much more lively and interesting. And what I'm going to do with this light is give it a little bit of blue, not very much, just a tad like that, just to cool everything down a little bit. And then I'm going to duplicate this light, right click, duplicate. And this light, I'm going to pick that red color off that, uh, that light there in the, in the scene. And I'm going to set the intensity up to 500. And then let's just adjust its position. I want to go with negative 300 on X. The Y value is good. And we just need to adjust that Z offset. And I'm going to go for 2000. And you can see how that's giving us this nice red light off to the side. We're seeing some kind of red in all these edges here, which is quite good, I think. So I just need to duplicate that to move it over to the other side. So right click, duplicate. And all we need to do here is set that X value to positive 300. So now we're done with our basic tunnel build and light. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to render this out because I want to be able to composite this in a different scene. So the first thing I need to do before I do that is to turn on motion blur because we're moving pretty fast. And the default motion blur is, is always much too much, I think, um, for any practical purposes. And what I do is I come over to the project uh, properties and I just reduce that shutter angle down to 90. And so we've still got some blur. I'll turn it on and off. You can see we've got the blur around the sides here, and this is going to smooth off that motion, but it's not that crazy uh, 360 shutter angle, which gives us far too much blur. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to Share and Export Movie, and I'm going to call this Color Pass. And I want to use ProRes HQ. I don't want any transparency here. So then we're going to save that to our Renders folder. So having done that, I'm going to render out a separate pass uh, and the reason I want this separate pass is that I want to be able to isolate these tubes, these, these lighting tubes and these lights on the side here, uh, because we're going to be glowing those separately. So I'm going to select all the lights and turn them off. And then I'm going to select the tunnel model, come into 3D object. And you remember we had that object environment set to 50%. Uh, I'm actually going to turn that down to nothing. And you'll see that very conveniently, it now leaves us with just the red lights and the tubes. Uh, and that's great because we can just isolate those and just glow just those elements. So now we can render out this pass, export movie. And again, we want to use HQ. And we're going to save, save this as light pass and render that out. So now I'm in a new project and I've set it up exactly the same way. 1920, 1080, 25 frames a second and a duration of 16 frames. So first thing I'm going to do is imp import those renders that we've created. So come to my renders folder, bring both of those in. And we want to put that light pass above and let's actually set its blend mode to add. So you'll see that doesn't actually do very much initially. Uh, but we're going to be uh, using that in just one second. The first thing I want to do is I say is add a lens flare so that we hide that black hole at the back there. So I'm going to add lens flare and we just want to make sure that it's sitting exactly where we want it to be. Something like that. Just move move its center up a little bit on Y like that. Now, I don't think what I want to that ring, but turn that ring radius down to nothing. It's up to you whether you keep those streaks. I think I quite like those streaks, so I'm going to leave those in there. And then I'm going to increase that size quite a lot to something like 250 and the intensity up to about that, I think. So what are we, like 1.25, I think is probably going to be good there. And also I think I don't quite like that colour uh, and I think I want to just push it more towards blue somewhere, somewhere like that. Not, not too much, but that's kind of 
feels fresher and nicer, I think. So now let's look at the question of these glows. And I'm actually going to move that above the, uh, the lens flare, I think. Now I'm just going to turn this blend mode back to normal, so it'll help us to see what I'm doing here. So I'm first of all going to work on those red lights. And to isolate those, I'm going to come over and select Color and Channel Mixer. And I'm going to turn that Alpha Alpha down to zero. And I'm going to turn the Alpha Green and Alpha Blue down to negative two. And I want to set the Alpha Red all the way up to one. So if I turn off everything underneath it, you can see I've isolated just those red lights. And then what I can do is I can add to this layer Glow Neon. And I think I might just increase that outer brightness up to seven, just so you can really see it. So you can see now we've got that nice sort of glow on those lights. And that just gives it a bit more of a photographic feel, I think. OK, so then we can do the exact same thing with the blue. So I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to turn off everything underneath it so we can focus on this. I'm going to turn off that neon just for the time being. So we just need a different arrangement here. So Let's turn the red all the way down to negative two and the blue and the green up to positive two. So now we've got those isolated as well and we can turn on our neon and we've got probably slightly too strong an effect there. Let's turn our other layers back on again, much too strong. Let's just turn this down a bit until we get something that we like. And in actual fact, we'll just probably just, just adjust that mix value down till it's not too crazy. So I'm gonna go for something like 20% on that mix value. And then what we can do is we can add a little bit of extra color into this by uh, selecting color and color curves. Make sure that's on top. And then we could just push some more blue into it, for example. That's too much, but just a little bit like that and possibly a little bit of green as well. You can see that's just giving us a slightly nicer effect, maybe even more blue. I'm just going to exaggerate this for you, but all those things that we've done, I think, just sort of help bring it all to life, especially those glows. You can see the difference when we don't have a glow. It just looks quite flat. Again, I think probably that red is too much and we can just dial back that mix value a bit so it's not too much. So once you've rendered out your final scene and you're happy with it, there are a number of different ways in which you can turn it into a GIF that keeps looping forever. In this instance, I'm using compressor. So the thing to look for is this motion graphics section and animated image large. Drag that in there and you can see that that gives you a GIF and uh, you can see the playback is continuously. So that, that'll give you the loop that you're looking for. And all you need to do is, is render that out. My preferred option is to use Photoshop if you happen to have it. And then you can do file export. And if you select Save for Web Legacy, you'll get this dialogue and you'll see you've got a lot of, of kind of control over how it looks. And from experience, it does seem to give you better results than anything else that I've tried so far. But I've probably not found the ideal thing or I've probably not set the other options up as they need to be set up. But anyway. It's really up to you and probably compressor is the simplest thing to use. Anyway, there you go. I hope that's been interesting. Thanks very much for watching. See you again another time.